Gran Turismo is not just a game, it's a driving simulator. The link between game and reality is so close that developing the latest game prologue without real time on the track would be impossible. Katunori is passionate about cars and being behind the wheel of a fast car on an open track beats everything. They're the most beautiful industrial products. Cars naturally have charm, and cars and driving are enjoyable as they are. So we concentrate on reproducing them without adding anything. That's probably the key characteristic of Gran Turismo, keeping everything realistic. For Katanori's team at Polyphony, who created Prologue, today's a chance to have fun and learn more about the balance and handling of a real car. Today, our team will conduct some research into how stability control systems work in real cars. But I'll just be happy if, at the end of the day, the experience rekindles the team's motivation to create driving games. Our job is to represent the enjoyment of cars through the virtual world. And because we create computer games, it's important that everyone tastes the enjoyment of actually driving real cars. Everyone today, these driving tests, just like in the game Prologue, are really important in learning about the pure physics of a car and how to control it when you're driving on the edge. is at the heart of Japan's car culture. Wander through back streets downtown and you'll find tuning shops turning out mega-powered machines which are raved and drooled over by petrol heads and power junkies the world over. This backdrop of fast cars, cool bars and neon-lit skyscrapers are Polyphony's inspiration and home. This is the heart of Gran Turismo and mission control for Kazunori and his team who work round the clock to build the world's best driving game. The philosophy for creating Gran Turismo was simply to create a game for myself that suited me. I had no idea it would be such a success. I just hope there'd be others in the world who like the game too. Since its launch in 1997, Gran Turismo has sold over 35 million units worldwide, making it not only the biggest selling computer game, but also the fastest. Though it took time for car manufacturers to embrace this new medium, they're now knocking the door down for the cars to be created in 3D glory for a global test drive. Key to this success has been the physics engine, which replicates the weight and dynamics of each individual car. And for Gran Turismo Prologue, it's now even better. The physics engine, which has been introduced for GT4 Prologue, is completely new, and is the first major update since Gran Turismo first appeared in 1997. So the improvement to drive feel is now much closer to the real thing. It had been possible to learn real driving in the virtual world of Gran Turismo before, 
But now for both fans and professional racing drivers, I think they both have much more to learn from it. You can learn real driving by playing Gran Turismo, and now with Prologue, I can say that with conviction. That really is my honest opinion. However, you don't create masterworks like Gran Turismo locked away in a warehouse in some out-of-town industrial area. You've got to suck up the surrounding culture and outside influences, hang out with car people and talk turbo boost and downforce. Just like in real life, to be able to drive fast and post race-winning lap times, you must first learn the basic skills of handling a car on a track. This is why we have GT4 Prologue. By the time you've passed the driving tests, you'll have picked up all the skills required to drive fast in both the virtual and the real worlds. You'll have learnt the importance of being smooth with the car, picking the right line through the corners, and you'll automatically know how to prevent a slide turning into a crash. It's impossible to drive fast on a track without experience, so a driver has to study the art of driving bit by bit. First you must understand the mechanics of how a car works, and then you can synchronize your feeling of what the car is doing to its physics. The most important thing is for your driving to be smooth, effortless and accurate. When the driver approaches this slippery zone, there is a metal plate which is uh, built in into the ground. Uh, there are sensors which measure the car's approaching speed. Uh, roughly about 40 kilometers per hour is, is the curriculum. And uh, once the car drives over the plate, the plate jolts, throws you into a, a spin, and uh, the driver's objective is to try to avoid spinning out. On the public road, a skid is often the beginning of an accident and something to avoid. Whereas on a racetrack, whether you're a novice making mistakes or an expert driving on the limit, skids and slides are all part of it. The important thing is to learn how to deal with a skid, whether it's the rear of the car sliding in oversteer or the front of the car losing grip and understeering. And the best way to learn this is on a skid pan, where there's plenty of space for mistakes. The more you practice controlling your car in a skid, the better prepared you'll be for the racetrack. And hopefully, catching a slide will become second nature. At first, you'll do lots of spinning, but once you've mastered the technique, being able to slide a car under perfect control is more than a useful skill. It's one of the best feelings ever. And it looks pretty good too. Nothing looks cooler than a world-class rally driver drifting through a corner in perfect control. It's like motorized ballet. Formula One drivers have great respect for professional rally drivers, not least because nearly every time they have a go at rallying, it's ended in tears. So if the world's top track drivers struggle to master rallying, then perhaps it's best to first master the more stable world of circuit driving. An empty racetrack is heaven, a place where you can let yourself go. No police, no speed cameras, and no chance of losing your license. To be quick around a track, which you'll have to be to win a race, you need to learn the basics. At first, you won't believe how much space you've got until you get it all wrong and find yourself running out of room and heading for the tyre wall. As you'll no doubt find out, the basic laws of physics apply to all cars, which you have to understand and harness to your best advantage.
The 125 BHP Volkswagen Lupo GTI is cute and front-engined. It's light but doesn't have neck-breaking horsepower. Because it's not that fast, you'll be tempted to chuck it around and have fun. It's a giggle, but not the fastest way to drive. Chill out and make use of the power that you've got. The Mercedes SL has a stomping 493 BHP right in front of your nose, and at almost two tons, it's almost twice the weight of the Lupo. There's stacks of tire-burning grunt under your right foot, but as it's a heavy beast, you have to drive the SL using your head. Fling it about, and it'll be a remortgage before bedtime. The Lotus Elise only has 118 bhp, which doesn't sound like enough power for a trip down to the shops, but then it weighs just 725 kilograms, about the same as a shopping trolley. It's mid-engined, which gives it excellent balance and fantastic steering, but it's short, which makes it easy to spin, so if you do get into trouble, you'll need lightning reactions to pull it back. The great Ayrton Senna had a hand in developing the Honda NSX. Honed from aluminium for low weight and powered by a 3.2 litre V6 with 276 bhp mounted behind your head, the NSX revs all the way to 9,000 rpm and sounds fantastic. Finally, the Nissan 350Z. Front engine, rear wheel drive. Same as the SL, but without the weight. Driving the Z is pure fun. It's really well balanced and great to drift. And as you can see, it looks just gorgeous. When you first go on a racetrack, you'll only be thinking about driving fast and wowing your mates with a quick lap time. Typically, you'll be driving like this, with big swings of the steering wheel and frantic movements trying to keep it all together in the belief that you're laying down a fast lap. Big mistake. Just concentrate on driving smoothly and you'll start improving your lap time without even realising it. This is what you should be aiming for. Our pro driver has now calmed down and is getting it right. It could be your granddad on his way to the shops to pick up a paper. No sudden movements, no drama, and it's fast. So be smooth. It's as simple as pouring a pint. Now we've mastered the art of being smooth, we need to understand the racing line. This line is the fastest route around a circuit. When a racing driver talks about learning a circuit, he means that he's working out where the natural line runs. At each corner, there's a point at which you should turn the car into the bend, clip its apex, and a point at which you should exit. Gran Turismo's Kazunori talks of the racing line as an element that the car itself will define. Whenever I'm driving on a track, my attention is focused on being calm and smooth. I always aim for a smooth lap. The secret of driving fast is to let the car go the way it wants to, not to fight it. The racing line isn't necessarily the most geometrically efficient line. Rather, it's the line which the car traces when you let it lead you. Lines will be decided naturally if you follow the car's lead. A fast lap isn't about going flat out everywhere. There will be times when you need to go slowly in one section so that you can be quick in another. This is what Driving Test 4 teaches you in Prologue. Here on the real racetrack, it's exactly the same. Master the test in Gran Turismo and you'll master it in real life. 
The most important thing is to be on the throttle as soon as you exit the corner. The quicker you're back on the gas, the faster you'll be on the straight. Racing school instructors call this slow in, fast out. Try to attack the first section of these corners with too much speed and you'll run wide. Off the track. Then you're in trouble. You'll lose loads of speed and won't get the car into the right position to take the next turn. The end result being you've lost loads of time. The whole lap is ruined and all because you were too fast in the wrong place at the wrong time. When you start driving on a track, even if you've been driving on the road for years, you don't really understand the forces that build up in a car when it's travelling at racing speeds. The energy which a car creates when travelling at speed can easily push you off the track, as the lads from Polyphony are finding out. So tests like this can be both fun and a steep learning curve. Once you've understood these forces, they can be made to work in your favour, and that's just what the slalom test is all about. The objective here is to drive through the course in the quickest time without hitting any cones. It looks simple and not very relevant to fast driving, but if you think that, you're very wrong. The trick is to let the car flow and establish a rhythm. As you can see, to do this, the driver lifts off the throttle as he rounds the cones. Then he's back on the throttle to the next row of cones. Lifting the throttle pitches the car's weight forward and helps the turn. From the outside, the car's movement should have all the grace of a champion slalom skier. Now look what happens when the driver attacks the course without thinking, just trying to get through as quickly as possible. The car gets out of shape and he's lost his rhythm. But worst of all, it's taken him 50% longer to complete the course. It doesn't matter how good your car is or your skill as a driver, you need to keep your concentration throughout these tests or you'll run ragged and spin out. Even Kazunori in the awesome Mitsubishi Evo 8 with permanent four-wheel drive finds a slalom can catch him out. I'm <laughs> sorry. This is really like a dream. I, I'm getting to drive the cars that I read about in magazines, the ones that I can't afford personally, but then here I am actually in the driver's seat and being able to, to take it out and really extract the full performance out of these vehicles that you really can't do out in the public without being fined huge amounts of money and having your license taken away. One of the things that I learned how to do was in a car that's going 200 kilometers per hour, it was quite thrilling to be able to break from that down to zero to stop was uh, a real educational experience. This is a real-world replica of one of Prologue's driving tests. It doesn't sound logical, but in order to go fast, you have to master braking. This test teaches you how to brake hard, smoothly and with precision. The inexperienced track driver tends to brake too softly and too late. 
Just imagine that while your car is knocking down the cones, you're trying to turn into a corner. You need to plan your braking by taking reference points from the side of the track. These could be signs, bridges or grandstands. Many tracks have distance boards prior to each corner, which makes your planning even simpler. Without a plan, you're certain to get out of shape. Precision is required. The professional driver will brake hard early and then gently start to come off the brakes to avoid a skid. Once you've mastered the basic track skills of cornering and braking, it's time to confront the toughest challenge, the rally stage. This is a typical scene for a competition rally driver and one that humbles even the fastest and bravest of Formula One drivers. Weighing in at just over a thousand kilos, this is a Group N Mitsubishi Evo 7. Most modern rally cars, it has permanent four-wheel drive with a combination of three differentials controlling torque split, which, to you and me, means independent power delivery to each wheel. Powered by a two-litre turbocharged engine, it develops up to 300 bhp, is geared to 140 miles an hour and should propel you to 60 around a Welsh valley such as this in just five seconds. When you're spectating on a rally stage as the latest Scandinavian hotshot hammers past in a four-wheel slide, the term smooth doesn't spring to mind. You'll just want to get in the car, nail the throttle and hear the engine popping and banging like rifle fire. But to be fast on the dirt, you've still got to work on that smoothness thing. It may look as though your rally hero is all arms and elbows, but he's still trying to make minimum movements. And to interpret the instructions from a navigator and understand the road ahead, a rally driver needs the computing power of NASA, combined with the coordination of a dancer. It's all about being prepared for what's ahead and setting the car up for it. The driver is working harder than the road racer with more steering input and gear changing, but his movements should be just as smooth and calculated. Driving a rally car fast is all about flow and momentum. The top rally driver has an incredible level of car control. He feels what the car's doing underneath him, looks ahead at the surface and predicts every bump and depression's likely effect on the car. It's a lesson in concentration. If you're struggling to control the car, you're not working with it. Things happen fast and you need to be ahead of the game for whatever's round the next corner or over the next crest. A mistake on a racetrack costs just fractions to your lap time. Even a big trip across the grass or a gravel trap might not be the end of your race. In rallying, though, there's less margin for error. It's like you're on a tightrope, just a few yards off the line and you've hit tree stumps, boulders, or worse, careered off a cliff and it's goodbye stage win. Hello, Mountain Rescue. So, whether it's a forest stage in Wales or a virtual stage in Gran Turismo, it's the same deal. As ever, keep it smooth and don't fry your brain by driving too fast. I bought my race car because of GT, and when I test drove the, the car in real life and I played it in Gran Turismo, it was identical. Wherever you're driving, either in the virtual or real world, it's technique that matters. You need to master the skills and learn by your mistakes, and the best way of doing this is in Gran Turismo. Some might say that GT is a racing game. I'd have to disagree. I'd say that it is true to its name. It's a driving simulator. By the time you've passed all the tests in Prologue, everything you've done will make perfect sense. You'll be a better, more confident and smoother driver. You'll have mastered the skills of driving fast, 
and understood what it takes to win races. Playing Gran Turismo makes you want a car. I've seen so many people like that. It's natural for us to be captivated by cars, not just when we play Gran Turismo, but when we create it too. Whatever your interest in cars and driving, Gran Turismo gives you more. More experience, more entertainment and more skill for the real world.